Drop this off in the night deposit for me, will you? Good day, huh? Anytime Mrs. Winston doesn't complain about the pumpernickel, it's a great day. Good night. Take it easy. Hurt here. I'm at 8963 Gaylord. You better send an ambulance over here. There's a guy outside and he's been beaten up really bad, and so is my friend here. There's two people hurt? Yes, there's two. How well, bad are they? One of them's breathing. I don't know about the guy outside. Please stay on the line. Yeah, well, why would I why would I hang up? Sir, units are on the way. Are you ready for this? Prepared, yes. Ready? I don't know that I could ever be ready for an assignment like this. That's him. Mac Coletti. Prophet of God. Sir, can you tell I, me what happened? I don't know what happened. I, I didn't see anything. I, I didn't see anything at all. Oh. When you walk down the road, heavy burden, heavy load, I will ride. And I will walk with you. I'll walk with you till the sun don't even shine. Walk with you every time I tell you I'll walk with you. Believe me, I'll walk with you. Upstate New York man remains in a coma today following a severe beating on an Evansville street. Stephen Ivelcha, a 25-year-old law student, was transferred by helicopter early this morning to Albany County General. Ivelcha, an African-American, was reportedly coming to the aid of another African-American man when the attackers turned on him. Local authorities have no suspects and will not comment on a possible motive for the attacks. Meanwhile, closer to home, the Times... That was some racket last night, huh? The police, the sirens... Used to be you could walk down these streets. You got cream? Hey, Matt. Morning. Hi. This guy's from the state attorney's office. Hi, Andrew. He's on some kind of task force in Albany or something. <laughs> Politicians love task forces. <laughs> Buy some cream. Yeah, yeah, Gary. Take care, Matt. See you, Gary. I'd like to ask you a few questions about last night. Well, you can ask anything you want. I've already told Dutch here everything. So you didn't see anyone beating Stephen Avelja or um, running away? Nope. You should ask Jeffrey. He was there. Well, all Jeffrey remembers is that the men were white and that he thinks that he saw a car um, passing by just before the, the attack. Did you see a car? Cars are outside. I was inside. I can't help you. What's the state attorney interested in this for anyway? We're trying to determine if, uh, if this was a hate crime. Well, it wasn't any love fest, I'll tell you that. 
Look, I'm sure you're just trying to do your duty, Andrew, but uh, I think it's pretty clear that this was an attempted robbery. Oh, before I forget, you might want to count it and see if it's all there. We found this on the ground. I think a couple of guys cased the bakery last night and then uh, jumped Jeffrey on the way to the bank. Looks good. This isn't about black and white. It's about green. Honey, it's a quarter of ten. We're going to be late for church. I've got two ties here. Pick one. Hey, Dutch. Hey, Carrie. How you doing? Carrie, this gentleman is from the uh, attorney general's office. He's asking questions about what happened last night. He was just leaving. As some of you know, Reverend Evelger left this morning for Albany to be with his wife, Mary, at the bedside of their beloved son, Stephen. I've been informed that Stephen's condition is perilous, that his life hangs today by a thread. Well, I want you to know that that little thread is a lifeline held by God Almighty. When did and they so start yelling in church? Stephen in the arms of the shepherd today as we open our own arms to welcome back another lamb into the flock. Mr. Matt Coletti. Come on up here, Matt. Um, <clears throat> I'm not very good at this whole uh, public speaking thing. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, uh, my best buddy and me were taking turns driving Reverend Venable crazy and throwing rocks at the side of the church. One of us got a, a little out of hand, and all of a sudden that window was falling down in little pieces. I don't know which rock did it. Uh, by all rights, you should be paying for half of this, Dutch. <laughs> anyway, I, I promised my mother that we would, uh, that I would do the right thing by the church and, and replace that window. Faith? So, here it is. In memory of my mother, Maria Coletti. Thank you, Matt. I'm sure your parents are proud of the man that you've become. Someone who's not afraid to stand up. Now I want you to listen to me and understand me clearly. This tragedy is not an act of God. This is an act of hate. It was. It was a hate crime. They came after us because we were black. You don't know that, Jeffrey. You weren't there. Now just wait a minute. Two black guys try to rob a white guy and it's a robbery. But two white guys rob a black guy and all of a sudden it's a hate crime. Now, I'm sorry, if you want to be treated equal, it's got to work both ways. Stop it. Sit down, now. Every crime is a hate crime. But God raises warriors to fight evil when evil comes. Now, beautiful windows are lovely. But they're no good if they don't let the light shine in. You've got to find the truth, whatever that is and shine the light on it. Now, I am very confident that you will do the right thing. Please join me in hymn number 42. I can't believe this. Well, that lady preacher's asking for trouble. Who do you really think did it? Look, we're never gonna find out. Stephen's the only one who saw him and he's in a coma. Well, hell, we don't even know if they were white. I mean, Jeffrey just says they were. And for all we know, it could have been some drug deal gone bad and Jeffrey's just trying to cover his butt. Jeffrey and drugs and Stephen of LJ, he was a law student. Nothing's impossible. So just forget about it? Yeah, forget about it.
time for you to learn the Coletti family secret for baking bread. I'm very excited. I never actually baked anything before. Oh, no big whoop. That's why I hired you. I don't want anybody around here telling me I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Hello there. Um, how can I help you? Yeah, you got any of those fruit bar things with the icing? Uh, I'm sure that we do. How many would you like? A dozen. They're right there. Uh, bags are over there and pick them up with the wax paper. Excuse me? Heard somebody got beat up here the other day. Oh, uh, not here. Uh, across the street and down the way a bit. So you didn't see anything then, huh? No, I, I didn't see anything at all. That's what I told the cops. I wasn't here working. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's what I'd say, too, if I'd been a witness. I wasn't a witness. That'll be three bucks. Who are you staring at? You. What's it to you? Maybe you saw something. Leave her alone. This isn't any of your business. I'm making it my business. Why don't you two get the hell out of here? Hey, hey, guys. Take it easy. I don't want any trouble here, okay? Here, here. Here's your change. Hey, thanks. Derek, huh? Hey, you're the new kid over at the auto shop. Uh, you know what John was telling me about you? He said you, you do good work. Well, I like cars. You're the guy at the window in church, right? Yesterday you were there? Yeah. I always like to check out the neighborhood church in a new place. Sort of gives me an idea what's going on. Sounds like a lot going on, huh? Uh, no big whoop. So, uh, what can we get you? Um, loaf of rye. First one's on the house, right, man? That's right. Welcome to the neighborhood. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. See ya. Hello, Coletti Bakery. Hi, Yeah, just hold on, please. Hello. This is Ted from the church. Someone has broken your window. <sighs> what? Man, oh, man. You know how much this thing costs? I, I can't replace that. No one is asking you to, Mr. Coletti. I'm sure that God would rather have you back in this church than another window. I'm not a church guy. I, I don't do the whole Sunday thing. I, things aren't like they used to be. Well, what did it used to be like exactly? Well, I, there were more people I knew, I, I guess. Uh, people who were white. I, I, don't get me wrong, I, I don't dislike black people, I, it's just, uh, we don't have anything in common. I mean, I came in here the other day and, and people were yelling and screaming amen out loud and stuff. I, that's not who I am. Well, well, let me see if I understand you correctly. You would come to church and worship God if there were more quiet white people in here? Let me ask you something. Do you believe in God? Sure I do. Good. Because God has a message for you. Excuse me? God has a message for you. And he asked you to pass it along. Yes, he did. Uh, he's chosen you to be a prophet. Prophet? Is that all? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. This is... This is very weird. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Good. Then just listen. Being a prophet doesn't involve psychic powers. And it's not predicting the future from your own intuition. It's an act of obedience. It's letting God use you to tell the truth to the people. It's shining his light smack dab in the middle of darkness. Evil has invaded this town, Mr. Coletti. And God expects you to stand up and expose it and send it on its way. 
now you'll either do this or you won't. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who do you think threw this rock through that? Some kid fooling around. This is the symbol of the Aryan Patriots. It's a white supremacy group. God is counting on you, Mr. Coletti. You tell him he's got the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. That's funny. That's the same thing Jonah said before he got swallowed by a whale. Stephen Belgium, the upstate New York law student who was brutally beaten last Saturday when he came to the aid of a robbery victim, remains in a coma in an Albany hospital. Police still have no leads in the attack. Garbage workers. It wasn't a robbery. It must be very difficult for you, knowing that a man is now fighting for his life because he fought for yours. Yeah, but I can help thinking that no black man was safe on that street that night. Just happened that they found me first. This is great. Well, Carrie, thank you for your time. I'm just sorry I couldn't be more help. Well, actually, um, I'm organizing a neighborhood meeting tonight at the church. It's going to be sort of a, an update to... Uh, let everyone know you go. about what we know about what happened the other night and also to inform people about, about hate groups and what to do when they come into an area. You really think this was a hate crime? I know it was. And I also think that somebody on this street saw what happened that night and possibly scared him away. And what makes you think that? Because they didn't stay around to finish the job. What are you doing here? I was asking your wife some questions. You stay away from my wife. She didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. I'm getting sick of you people coming into our town and, and stirring things up. Matt, what is this? Some kid threw it through the new window at the church. Your window? Oh, Matt. Can I see that, please? What are you going to do? Dust it for prints? It's a rock. Mr. Coletti, this symbol is actually... I know what the symbol is. Believe me, some... Pimply-faced teenage geek is probably laughing over his cereal, thinking he's pulling something over on us. Okay, of, of all the windows in the church, why would someone throw a rock with this symbol on it through the one window with your name on it, which is the same name of the man who called the police that night? You know, you're really reaching here, pal. Excuse me, I have things to do. Matt. Did you see them? Were you the one that scared him away? How could you ask me something like that? Mr. Coletti, I really hope you can make it to the meeting tonight. Matt's not a liar, Jeffrey. If he'd seen something, he'd tell us. You wonder what I'm doing here. You won't. What was that? I'd stay in a coma too if I could after I saw that. I mean, I don't mean any disrespect. It's just that I know I've never seen anything like that. That thing that horrible. And a lot of people think that I I saw more than what I'm telling it. The funny thing is, is, if I did tell them, they'd never believe me. I've never seen anything like that. That, that thing that...
I believe that what happened to Stephen was a hate crime. And I believe it was carried out by a member or members of a hate group. And if a new racist organization is establishing itself right now in this neighborhood, there are things that you need to do. You mean like a community militia or something? Uh, look, I got to interject here and say that we have absolutely no proof that race had anything to do with the other night. Yes, sir. Well, I, I can't say one way or the other whether what happened to Stephen was a hate crime. I think I can prove that there's a hate group in our town. I'm Stan. I, I've got the copy and office supply shop right here on Gaylord. I didn't see who it was. I mean, I found this in the wastebasket last night. Attention, white men and women of Evansville. Welcome. We are the Aryan Patriots. We are warriors in a struggle to preserve the white race. Does a non-white have a job in this town that should be yours? I can't. I'll take it. The government no longer represents the white race. Don't wait for someone to come forward and protect you. It is every white man's duty to ensure the survival of his people and continue the ongoing work of God. I assure you, God has nothing to do with this. My name is Monica. I'd like to volunteer to help organize a community group to fight against this. I'll help. Well, you can count me in. And y you can use my place to print posters or, or flyers or whatever you need. Is there anybody else? Oh, good, good. This is good. Now, I've got a clipboard here where you can sign your name and your phone number and we can get this thing going. Excuse me. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm a little concerned about putting my name on a list that somebody might find. I mean, that's how we found out about them from a piece of paper. What happens if somebody leaves that list lying around somewhere? Look, I, I think that everyone here is responsible. I know everybody means well. But shoot, I heard they stock up guns and explosives and stuff. Maybe we ought to leave them alone, and all they'll do is write crazy stuff like that and make copies of it. But if we hassle them, they will definitely fight back. I grew up on a farm. I know what happens when you back a rat into a corner. Maybe we ought to let the police try and work this out first. No, no, wait, wait a minute. The idea here is to support the police. I think the kid's got a point. I think maybe we should all go home and sleep on this. Uh, Mr. Coletti, don't you have something else to say? No. Well, my offer is still open if anyone is interested. exactly what it is. A sign from God. It's getting harder and harder to say no to him, isn't it? Look, you want a prophet? There's your man, right there. Reverend Velger just called from the hospital. Stephen died a couple of minutes ago. <sighs> Did anybody see anything last night? Nobody saw anything. And nobody's gonna see anything. And at this rate, I guess nobody's gonna say anything either. That's how it starts. Nobody says anything because it's not their problem. 
until one day it happens to them. By then it's too late. There's nobody left to speak up. It's funny, isn't it? Stan reads the letter last night at the meeting, and then his place gets trashed. So what's your point? Maybe somebody tipped these guys off. What, do you think there was a spy at the church? Oh, come on, that's crazy. We all know each other here. Do we? You were in a pretty big hurry to end that meeting last night. A and the police didn't seem particularly worried either. What do you mean by that? Go ahead, tell me that there aren't any racist cops, Dutch. Oh, come on, everybody, that's enough. Look, Stephen, if Velger died on our streets, and where were the police? Where were you, Matt? And what were you doing out there, Jeff? Was it a robbery? Huh? Or a drug deal gone bad? Wait a oh, minute, wait a minute. Why is it that every time there's a black man involved, there's got to be a hey, drug deal? I didn't say that. That's racist. 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 Do you see what's happening? Do you see what the silence does? Tell them what you saw. Who are you? Who are you? And who will you become if you harden your heart to God's word now? Stop it. Stop it! I saw. I saw what happened to Stephen. I am the witness. I saw everything. What did you see? The night Stephen got beaten up. Jeffrey came into the store and you were right. I did scare them off. I ran outside to see what was going on and they saw me. There were two men and they were beating on Stephen. And one of them had a baseball bat or something and there was a car. It was a, a maroon 73 or 74 four-door uh, Buick sedan. I've seen that car. Those guys always look like trouble to me. I know them. I, I think it was the short one that came in here the other day. He must have been the one that left the paper. Hey, look, these people are cowards. And they're usually very, very easily led by... by someone. Matt? Was there someone else? Excuse me, I... I don't know who you are. But can you tell me if I'm losing my mind? That your mind is yours to keep or to lose, Matthew. There are voices and visions in your head fighting for your mind. And some of them are of God and some are not. But there is a battle going on. And it's not a battle for the flesh and blood of this town. It's a spiritual fight against the rulers of darkness in this world. Now you want to know who I am? I'm an angel sent by God. If you want to believe that or not, it's okay. Ask God to tell you what's true. And then speak it. A moment ago, you were a good citizen. This is where you become a prophet. There was someone else. I saw someone. Some... Thing, and it was watching everything. And I knew I was looking at at pure evil. And it looked at me. I knew I was looking at the devil. You 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 mean the the, the third person was uh, was frightening like a devil? Hmm? No. It was the devil. It was Satan. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it. <laughs> sure, he saw Satan. Matt, I think, uh... You know, we'll all agree that there's evil in the world, but, uh... Nobody believes there's a real Satan. You see what a good job he's doing? I'm sorry. But this is one lousy insult to the memory of Stephen E. Belcher. I quit, Matt. I hate to bring this up. But I'm afraid Matt made a mistake about the car, too. What does that mean? Well, that car he described. It was in my shop the night Stephen Avelja got beat up. No, that's not true. I remember. It's the dirtiest engine I ever saw. I swear it. I... Come on, Matt. Let's go.
first you swear you didn't see anything, then you say you did, and then it was the devil. My God, Matt! What am I supposed to do? Believe me. Either you will or you won't. You can't. Then get out. What? Get out! Go get Faith. Go to your mother. So you don't want to live with a crazy anyway, right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> What are you looking at? I believe you, Mr. Coletti. I believe you saw the devil. Oh, yeah? Why? Because I've seen him. And I've seen how he works. It's not with fire and brimstone, but with lies and deceit. Everyone's looking for some fella sneaking in the back door with horns and, and, and a long tail. Well, he walks right through the front door wearing a suit or, or a pair of blue jeans. He can come in many forms. And I don't know what form he's taken this time, but sometimes someone can see right through his disguise and recognize him for who he really is. I believe that you did that, Mr. Coletti. And I believe that those men were riding around with the devil that night. They don't know it. But you do. Coletti's. Hello. Let's get out of here. I don't know who did this, Matt, but I promise you we'll find him. I already told you who did it. Yeah. Look, Matt, maybe after this is all over, you should think about giving some counseling. Hmm? It's over, Dutch. It's all over. No, 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 no. Look, I understand. I understand. Look, I may not believe in the devil, but I'll tell you, after today, I believe in miracles. You know why? Because you shouldn't even be here. Mr. Coletti? Leave me alone. I can't do that. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I'm an angel sent by God. You, you really are an angel? I told you that. But what you don't know is that Monica and Andrew are angels, too. God has sent you a lot of help. Help? Are you kidding me? You've ruined my life! God has ruined my life! I've lost my family, my friends, my business, my reputation. A prophet is without honor in his own country, Mr. Coletti. God did not say that this will be easy. Will? Yes. Why? Why me? God chose David to bring down Goliath. Let me tell you something about David. He was the least of his brothers. He was the smallest and the weakest. But sometimes God uses the weak to show how strong he can be. That's right. You're vulnerable, like everybody, to the things that weaken the soul. Fear, prejudice, confusion. But you've got a good heart, and God can use that if you'll let him. God loves you, Matthew. Trust him. I can't. I've seen the beast, and I, I'm afraid. Then stand up to the fear. I don't know who it is. I do. And it's time I tell you. All of you.
What's going on? It smells like bread. Well, that's good because Matt is baking bread. My God, he is crazy. Well, how's he cooking in that oven? It's got to be ruined. Matt, what do you think you're doing? This place is unsafe. No, it's not. There's angels here. He's gone off the deep end. I mean, do something. Uh, uh, Matt, what do you say we take a little walk? Come on. Officer, Matt is doing something very important, and it must be finished. Matt, 35 minutes. Okay, you made your point. Let's go. It's over. No, it isn't, Dutch. It's just beginning. I know you all think I've been losing my marbles along with everything else. You know what? I think this might be the sanest moment of my life. The devil is out there, and I know where I can find him. And, and as long as there's just one man who's willing to stand up against him in the name of God. And that's all it takes. Excuse me. Something going on? Yeah. I know you killed Stephen Avelja. I saw your car there. You got bad eyes or something, man. This car wasn't there. It was in the shop that night. The mechanic guy, I'll tell you. Hey, Derek! Do you know why Derek stood up for you? Because he's been using you. Just like he's been using this, this whole town. I've got news for you, too. I'm sure you've been sitting in your filthy home, reading your, your, your Nazi hate books and your Aryan crap on the Internet for years. And one day you go in your car and, and something makes you decide to do something about it. Well, I know something that you don't know. That little voice that you heard that night, the one that whispered in your ear, hey, let's go find a black guy and kill him. That little voice was the devil and he was riding in the back seat of your car weren't you Derek I'm sorry I'm confused what's going on here I know who you are and you know who they are ever since you came into this town you've been playing us all like a pinball machine you know exactly where everyone's button is and you know where to push and how hard you are the devil himself, and you are a liar. Be careful, Matthew. You don't know as much as you think you do. Keep going, baby, it's working. You whisper in their ears, kill. You whisper in mine, be afraid. You talked an entire church full of people into doing absolutely nothing. I've been hearing your voice my whole life. And I have to confess something. I've listened. And now, I'm a prejudiced man. I don't know, I don't know what it's like to be black or, or, or Asian or, or Mexican or anything but white. And I have to admit there have been times where I've thought, wouldn't it just be easier? Just easier to be with my own kind. But you know what? I've discovered something about people. There are only two kinds on this whole earth. 
the ones who will tolerate you and the ones who won't. I won't. Just because he sent you some angels doesn't mean God cares about you, Matt. You're the one being used here. Look what he let happen here. God created diversity. God is the source of your problem. I have something to show you. Soldiers make their stand with guns and cannons. Politicians make their stand with the speeches and fancy words. All I've got is the only thing I know how to do best. I'm a baker. I just bake bread. I feed my family and my neighbors. And you will not stop me. I will not listen to your lies anymore. The bakery belongs to God now, and so do I. The angels told me the only way to make the devil go away is to tell him to do it. So do it. Run. Take off. We don't want you here. Are you sure? Yes, I am. So am I. I've got some changes to make. And it starts here. Will there be enough bread for everyone? Oh, yes. You're under arrest for the murder of Stephen and Belgia. You know the drill. Get him. Get him out. Come on, let's go. Nice job. See you later. So that's it? That's what a prophet does? God chose you to be his voice in this important dark time. And you did it. You delivered his truth. And he is very proud of you. Excuse me, I, I have to go see my family. 